Alrighty, hello again, and uh, I guess we had a few more questions about um, AMRAMs and uh, what the enemy plane uh, hears over his RWR uh, when missiles are in the air. Um, so we're going to serve right now with Cecil, and what we're going to do is we're going to uh, fire AMRAMs at each other at the exact same time, and uh, then you'll get a sense of um, when uh, the enemy target uh, will get uh, the missile tone over his RWR and uh, stuff like that. Um, but before we do that, there's a couple things we got to talk about real quick. Um, it's important when you're using AMRAMs to pull up your SMS page here and uh, note this MFD button with the target size next to it. Um, this target size can be cycled between uh, small, medium, large, and unknown. And um, that controls when your AMRAM will uh, go active or when it will pit bull. Um, so a small target size will have the um, AMRAM pit bull or go active at about eight miles. A uh, medium target size will have the AMRAM go active at about 10 miles and so on and so forth. The uh, larger the target size set, the uh, farther out the missile will pit bull. Uh, so most of the time when you're engaging fighters, you wanna have this target size here set to uh, small to pit bull at the uh, closest range. So they have the least amount of warning on their uh, RWR. Uh, next, that's important to know, is that the uh, AMRAM basically has three modes it can be in. It can either have its radar off uh, and it's being guided onto the target entirely by the F-16's uh, radar. Uh, and the second mode uh, is when it first goes active and it's in high frequency scan mode. And uh, when it goes active in this high frequency scan mode is when the enemy player or uh, plane will get a warning in his RWR. And then uh, after a while, once it's a little, little bit closer, it'll go to a medium scan mode um, and nothing will change in the cockpit. It's just the uh, missile switches to a more accurate uh, radar tracking method. Okay, and uh, when we shoot these missiles, um, we're going to shoot our missiles here at each other at RPI. And then we're going to pay attention to uh, some of these numbers here in the HUD that I'll point out here in a second, which will tell you when your missile gets to those different uh, radar configurations of high frequency or medium frequency. Uh, so with that, we'll go ahead and unpause and we're going to shoot missiles at each other here at uh, RPI. All right, I'll go ahead and count it down uh, for when we shoot. All right, we'll fox each other in three, two, one, fox three. Fox three. And you'll notice here in the bottom right, I have an M26, which means that in uh, 26 seconds, or now 20, 19 seconds, is when my missile will go to the next um, uh, radar state, radar configuration. And you'll see right now, uh, he's launched a missile at me, but I still haven't gotten a missile warrant, which I just did at about, um, what is that, 8 miles? No, 6 miles? Warning. I'm dead. Why'd oh, you dodge that missile? Caution. Yeah. Damn. Caution. Anyway, as you can see, um, there's quite, Caution. there's not very much warning for the uh, enemy pilot if you fire AMRAMs in, warning, um, warning. Warning, warning. with a small target size. And with that, that's everything you should need to know about, um, at least with, uh, what's going on in the cockpit of the enemy plane when you fire AMRAMs, AMRAMs at him. But it should be noted that the uh, AI cheat, so sometimes the AI will just magically know that missiles are inbound on them, and there's not a whole lot you can do about that. But as far as fighting enemy players, um, if you keep a soft lock on a player and fire an AMRAM like that with a small uh, target size, they won't get a missile warning, or know there's a missile inbound on them, until the missile's about 8 miles away. Um, so it's very important that you set your target size in your SMS page to small for that reason. All right, and again, if there's uh, any questions, feel free to ask again, and uh, we'll do our best to answer them. All righty, uh, here we over are over to the uh, beautiful Sinai Peninsula, and the uh, last question we had was, uh, what does an AIM-7 sound like when it's shot at you versus an AIM-120? So Cecil's going to go ahead and hard lock me here and shoot an AIM-7 at me. Um, and when he hard locks me, just kind of take note of the difference from the... Uh, the scan RBR tone to the uh, hard locking tone. Alright, you can go ahead and hard lock me if you can. 
Alright, so. Hardlock. Yeah, that's the telltale sign of an S16 hardlock. And a fire name 7, you have to have that hardlock. You can go ahead and shoot the missile. Fox one. And now you'll notice that all that happens is you get a flashing circle on the uh, RWR here and a missile launch warning. But I can't tell where the missile is in relation to me. Um, so it's just kind of best guess. Uh, I just got to kind of time it in my head and try and like use, I don't know, my dead reckoning to try and think about how far away the missile is. Just for my life hairs. Yep. So noble. Alright, and uh, that's the only difference between uh, AIM-7s and AIM-120s is the uh, hard lock is required for AIM-7s and AIM-7s you don't know the distance, um, but the enemy plane has to maintain that lock the whole time. And uh, did we take jammers? Uh, I didn't take jammers. Um, just a note about uh, ECMs is the, uh, the ECM um, only shoots uh, I don't know, a jamming signal out directly in front of and behind of you. Um, so uh, when you're engaging MiG-29s or C-30s or anything like that, um, if you're not pointing directly at them or directly away from them, having your ECM on doesn't do anything for you. It only works in a cone in front of and behind you. So just keep that in mind. And uh, with that, those are all the questions uh, that I tried to answer. And uh, again, if anything wasn't answered properly enough, just go ahead and ask again and we'll do our best to clarify.